Good morning. And happy birthday to you all. I, um, I, I want to, th that was so wonderful. Uh, congratulations again. That was so um, inspiring. So I want to stand on your existing protocol by thanking uh, Pastor Poju for, for inviting me, the privilege of um, being able to come here to share a few thoughts with you and also to share my admiration of you know what I'm what I'm seeing and and living I understand you've been doing this for like a decade now and it's grown phenomenally over the years into these this kind of gathering so it's it almost summarizes in a funny way maybe you didn't think about it but it almost summarizes the overall theme of today's event you know what next uh, some 10 12 I don't know when you started thinking about the platform you had an idea you had a vision and you went ahead to apply yourself so the moment you had your vision you proceeded to application so when you ask what next about Nigeria I'm wondering if we shouldn't reproduce the template of um, Pastor Koju Yemadi, vision and application. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm told I've got about 45 minutes to basically to teach you how to hate Nigeria <laughs> or, or, or make a case for hating Nigeria. And actually, when he told me I've got 25 minutes um, for this talk, I was wondering, oh, he must be a very generous man, because do you really need 45 minutes to teach Nigerians to hate? You know, <laughs> because um, we've got so many of these fault lines and divisions. It's a bitterly polarized and, 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 and divided country that um, you really don't need you need very little to trigger something, you know. Uh, it's either we are hating on the basis of ethnicity or hating on the basis of religion or hating on the basis of a number, you know, a multitude of invented, invented reasons. I could, I could just do like this, you know, blow a whistle and then, and then trigger and then I'm done in two seconds. <laughs> but that, that isn't um, what, I'm going to, what I'm going to do. Um, about, I'd say in February of um, 1998, um, that's when I officially became Andrew. Uh, people of older generations in this hall, you know Andrew, don't you know? Don't you remember Andrew? Ah, uh, that. <laughs> My, my Facebook and Twitter friends don't know Andrew because they were being born around the time Andrew was ch checking out, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I became Andrew in 1998. Um, that's when I, I left this country for, for good, so to speak. Uh, it started out as what I thought was going to be a brief intellectual sojourn abroad. So first I left and headed out to, to Johannesburg in South Africa, where I was briefly um, a research fellow at the, at the French Institute of South Africa. But then I moved to France, uh, spent some time as a researcher at the Center for African Studies at the University of Bordeaux, and then moved on to Canada. Uh, where I started my doctoral studies uh, in the fall of 19, about, you know, uh, in, in, in September of 1998. So the plan was to do it sharp, sharp, and then return home, you know, uh, come back. But um, one thing which characterizes absence from home, whether short or long, is that deep sense of loss, that deep sense of nostalgia which you begin to feel 
the moment you put some distance between you and the familiar sights and scenes and scents of your home. So it's called missing home. So as I settled into my first winter in 1998, you know, those sentiments uh, inevitably crept in. I began to miss two things. I began to miss home and I began to miss Nigeria. They are not the same. Missing home and missing Nigeria are two totally different propositions, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll tell you why they are different. You see, missing home, when I got into that, was engulfed by that emotion, by that sentiment, I had concrete references. Missing home is a sentiment or an emotion, if you wish, with very concrete and specific reference, whether human reference or even geographic reference. So that missing home for me in 1998, for instance, was missing my mom, my dad. It was missing my friends. It was missing my siblings. It was missing, it was missing my, my folks in the literary and the academic community, which I had known in Lagos and Ibadan. So I had very concrete, and in terms of locations, it was missing first and foremost, my hometown, Isalu, in Yagba East, local government area of Kogi State. Any Kogites here? Yeah, good. So it was missing those places. It was missing Ibada. It was missing Ilori. It was missing Lagos. So I had very, very concrete reference for what it meant to miss home. Missing Nigeria was a totally different ball game because it was an abstraction. It had no reference. It had no. There were no specifics in terms of what it actually meant to miss Nigeria. I couldn't define it. It was just there. Oh, I miss Nigel, but what does it mean? <laughs> I couldn't tell. And I wouldn't be able to tell on the, a few years down the road. I, well, I was going home to, I was returning home tomorrow anyway. You know, I'll just round up and go home tomorrow, but then another tomorrow and all the tomorrows were piling up. And, um, and remember, I'm talking about an era where it was before the social media era, right? So the means of communicating with home and with Nigeria was through letters and email and, and stuff like that. Because remember, uh, Baba OBJ, uh, founder of modern Nigeria, according to PD, they had not yet invented mobile telephony. So years later, it was when I started going back to the kinds of email exchanges and letters I was writing back to friends in Nigeria that I was able to put a finger finally on what it meant and what it means to miss Nigeria. I could finally define it because of what I was telling people in those letters. I went over two years of emailing in my archives and it began to appear to me that the more Canada made me uncomfortable in my skin, the more I missed Nigeria, not home. What was Canada doing that was so, so bad? Why was Canada so uncomfortable for me? Why was it so inhabitable for me? You'd think that I had escaped from all the Wahala and the Yawa back home to a place we usually just glamorize, you know, the El Dorado. But there I was in those emails complaining and missing Nigeria. So let's get into what I was missing and what I was telling people I was missing. <laughs> 